Okay, so for my shadow demonstration, I've decided to use the largest non-point light source we have, the sun. Alright, now I'm going to do this in several parts. First, I'm going to use my shadow to demonstrate something. And remember, in a non-point light source, you have three parts to a shadow, okay? You have the umbra, the penumbra, and the antumbra. Since I am so close to where my shadow is casting, which I am going to, from this point on, refer to as the canvas. Since I'm really close to my canvas, I'm with my boots on, I'm six feet tall, all right? The antumbra and penumbra are essentially the same thing, all right? But when you look at my shadow, um, this line from there to me and then up to me forms a right triangle and the line from here, the shadow, down to where it actually is on the ground, that that line, that angle, is the same angle the sun is in the sky, okay? At this particular moment in time. So, there's some things I'm going to do. I'm going to do this with my shadow first, and I'm going to do this with something else. Um, if you look, the closer I am to myself, the shadow upon the canvas is sharper and crisper. We just really have an umbra. But as you go up, a hazy part starts to form. That hazy part, which is about, or you can see right here, let me use my finger, around my head is the penumbra and the antumbra. I'm just gonna say penumbra from now on. So the further an object is from the canvas, the more prominent the penumbra becomes, and the less prominent the umbra becomes. It's the same thing as at this column next to me. Right near where the canvas meets the object, we have a sharp shadow. And I'm using the concrete, it's not flat, it's bumpy. And you can see, and I'm gonna show you here in a second how topography can affect a shadow, but it's a very crisp line here. But as you go up, as you go, as the point on the canvas is further from the point of the object casting the shadow, it gets hazier. Your penumbra starts to come into the picture and your umbra becomes less pronounced. And something else here. On our canvas, on this part of our canvas that is essentially smooth, there's bumps, you can still see the outline of the shadow pretty well. If you go to this side of the shadow, we have significant topography in the form of grass. The border of the shadow becomes less pronounced. Well, that's because the grass itself is casting individual shadows. The angle of the light coming in is being blocked by blades in certain places, while in other places it's letting it through. So your shadow, even though this line here is the shadow of that, see how straight that is? That isn't straight at all. It isn't straight at all. So topography greatly influences shadow pattern. But in order to explain shadow to you properly, I need an object that no matter which direction I rotate it in, it's always going to cast the same shadow, okay? See, we have a shadow casting here if this pack of cigarettes is lined up like this. But if I turn it, the shadow changes shape, all right? See how that does it? I get a different shape of a shadow if I turn it. Same thing with my hand, too. It looks different. There's only one object in a three-dimensional universe that you can rotate any direction and not change the shadow, and that's a sphere. So I'm gonna go get my copper sphere. Okay, here is my copper ball. There is a six inch ruler divided into tens of inches and 20 is on the small side. Now, I have this sphere here 
as you can see, the shadow it's casting is not a sphere. It's elliptical because I'm angled to my source of light. However, no matter which direction I turn the sphere to, the shadow is consistent. It's elliptical the entire time. You don't get that with other objects. So I'm going to wait further in the day, closer to noon, so that the shadow of the sphere, the copper sphere, looks more circular. Just so you know, throughout this video, the copper ball, obviously it's not going to change its actual physical size, is about 1.25 inches in diameter. Remember, this is in tenths and hundredths, this is in inches. Okay, it's about 1225 right now. Uh, solar noon today is actually at 1253 and 49 seconds, and I got that from this website. But um, it doesn't have to be exactly solar noon. I'm just <clears throat> going to do this so that the uh, copper ball looks more spherical in shadow. This right here is a one foot galvanized uh, bolt, it's a galvanized steel bolt. Okay, I had to move my tape measure. My canvas wasn't level and the copper ball wasn't staying on. But if you don't believe me, that that's a foot bolt. See? Right there. Alright. So, there it is. Now I'm going to try to keep that height. Looks like I'm going to have to hold it for most of this because I don't have anything taller than that uh, galvanized bolt to do this. But here we are. Get about a foot up and here you can see the shadow's still slightly elliptical but you, all you, you can see a lot of umber okay now I'm going to do it at different heights using this tape measure to show you um, the development of a penumbra okay about one foot about two about three, about four, about five, about six, about seven, and about eight feet. So now you've seen how the penumbra develops as an object goes from the ground or its canvas, gets further away towards a non-point light source. We can do that one more time, but I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to talk this time. Okay, there's something I need to cover here because I think this is where a lot of confusion comes from. Okay, see that right there? See where my, the shadow of my finger is pointing? That is a shadow. That's a shadow of the copper ball. All right, that's a shadow, okay? This is a silhouette, not a shadow the two are not the same thing and i'm going to make my own little mini eclipses here in a second but this is a silhouette the disc of my copper ball over the disc of the sun in the sky is a this is a silhouette okay all right this is a shadow now a shadow by a non-point light source has three components umbra penumbra and antumbra all right those components of a shadow are not separate things. They are still a shadow. But this 
is not a shadow, it's a silhouette. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this because I know someone's gonna give me snot about it, but when you see the silhouette of my copper ball, you can still see the copper and the copper ball. You can even see the color of it. You can see the color of my hand. Why is that? Well, it's because we're getting reflection from the ground, okay? Um, obviously we are, because the shadows are not pitch black, <laughs> all right? So the ground is reflecting. That's something called albedo, but that's a topic for a different time. 